So how low are Toronto area home prices gonna fall? This, of course, is the million dollar question. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna start this video with, with the spoiler, and that is, no one has any idea how low they're gonna go, okay? So, you know, we're gonna talk about some of the ideas of where they might go, but the fact is, everyone is just guessing at this point. So, to, to give some context, we're gonna go back and look at how home prices have changed during COVID, what some of the experts think might happen, and under what circumstances the experts might be completely wrong, because I think it's important to understand what some of their assumptions are and where they could go off. So when we look at sort of the housing market in the Toronto area, the GTA, you know, before COVID in February, 2020, the average home price was just over $900,000. <laughs> Literally in two years, that average price increased to just over $1.3 million. Uh, and since February of 2022, you know, we're in the summer now of 2022 in June, the average home prices have fallen to about 1.2 million. So the question, of course, is how low will they go? You know, I've had a lot of people ask me, will they go to sort of the pre-COVID level of 900,000 again? Uh, And of course, the answer is, again, nobody really, really knows what's going to happen. Everyone is just making informed guesses right now. Now, I'll say what I think what I've been reading in most economists, I mean, I personally don't do forecasting, but a lot of the economists and the experts who are forecasting what might happen in the future. Most are not expecting home prices to fall down to pre-COVID levels. Most economists are expecting prices to fall anywhere from 15 to 20 percent. Um, and the reason they expect that to happen, I mean, they expect that to happen because they expect the markets to adjust to rising interest rates. But they're not as pessimistic to think prices are going to fall 30 plus percent, which would be the pre-COVID prices. Uh, for a number of reasons. I mean, generally, most economists are still relatively optimistic uh, about Canada's economy, at least for today. I mean, if we think about today, unemployment rates still at a record low, and they're also optimistic at you know the future sort of demand for housing, the underlying fundamentals. At the end of the day, our population is still growing faster than our ability to build homes, and they think all of these will be supportive of, you know, and bring some stability to the housing market in the future. Combined with, I think a lot of economists expect that the Bank of Canada and central banks are going to get inflation under control sooner rather than later. And I think all of these are some of the assumptions that a lot of economists are making why they don't think prices are going to fall 30 plus percent or even lower uh, to some of the pre-COVID price points that we saw. Now, it's important to understand that, you know, when economists say that Uh, prices might fall 15 to 20 percent. I mean, that would put GTA home prices back to the one to one point million average price point. But again, this is just these are just simple averages, which means that in some areas you might actually see prices fall far more than 15 to 20 percent, maybe 30 or 35 plus percent. And in other areas and house types, you might see prices only fall five and 10 percent. You know, some of the areas that probably saw the, the most rapid growth are probably going to be the most vulnerable areas like the downtown core that didn't appreciate as much probably a little bit less vulnerable so the next thing i want to talk about is under what circumstances might the economists and the experts be completely wrong and under what scenario might we see a bigger decline in home prices so a lot of the expert opinions about the future path of home prices and specifically that prices will fall about 15 to 20 percent are based on the assumption that inflation gets under control pretty quickly, uh, you know, and our economy remains strong. Now, of course, if inflation does not get under control very quickly and interest rates stay high, there's a possibility we might go into a recession. And many economists are actually expecting us to go into a recession. But I don't think a, a mild recession is what's going to push home prices down 30 plus percent. I mean, we would need to see, and this is the big difference between a a modest correction and a crash. You know, 15 to 20 percent is a a correction, 30 plus percent is a crash. And I think, again, when we think about why some of the economists aren't expecting that, because that's usually coupled with uh, a high rate, a higher rate of unemployment and distressed sellers in the economy. So again, the the assumption that they're making is that's not going to happen. But if we see high rates of inflation, high rates, interest rates, and eventually potentially an increase in the unemployment rate and some distressed sellers, 
you know, we could end up seeing more and deeper downward pressure on home prices. Now, you know, now this again, most ex experts do not expect that to happen. But it's worth noting that most ex experts don't always get everything right. I mean, the experts did not predict, you know, the, the housing bubble in the United States or the financial crisis that followed. Um, you know, and most experts did not predict that house prices would explode during COVID, right? So, you know, experts are making their best decisions based on the data they have, but sometimes they can get the, you know, the facts right. I mean, in particular during the financial crisis, most experts in Canada were not as worried that the financial crisis and the US housing bubble would be repeated in Canada. They did not expect a massive crash in home prices. And what was interesting at that time is while you know, the Toronto area market did see the housing market freeze for about six months because there was so much uncertainty globally during the financial crisis. Prices did fall. After about six months, the market actually rebounded relatively quickly. Uh, and it rebounded because Canada ended up not being as impacted uh, by these global trends. So that was a good example of sort of the economists kind of did get it right. And what was interesting, I remember at that time, I had just opened my office in around 2010. You know, and someone had come into my office and basically said, listen, I've been looking at it for, to buy a home for two years, but I'm just waiting for home prices to fall. And I remember asking him, well, why the heck didn't you buy a home when prices did fall, you know, in 2008 and early 2009 during the financial crisis? I mean, that was the time to buy. And I remember him saying that he expected prices to fall further, right? And I said, well, okay, that's fine. I mean, you made the prediction, but when you saw the market rebounding, and we can kind of see these trends, buyers rushing back in, the optimism returning, why don't you just jump into the market? And his response again was, he thought that was short term, that the, you know, it was a short term demand boom and prices would just crash to the floor. You know, some analysts, one in particular, Garth Turner, uh, who's a financial commentator, had kind of convinced people that's going to happen in Canada. Home prices are going to crash. And he pushed a lot of buyers to the sidelines. So, you know, the challenge that this buyer faced now was that home prices were now 20% higher than sort of the floor during the financial crisis. And he didn't want to get in either because he regretted not buying a year and a half earlier or because he thought prices were going to fall further and was just sitting on the sidelines. And I think this brings me to the last point I want to talk about, which is the difficult decision that we have to make, you know, if we're buying or selling a home during these uncertain times. So the challenge we face as home buyers today is that we need to make a home buying decision for ourselves, for our families during a period with a lot of uncertainty. And I think we're really faced with kind of one kind of important decision to start off, which is, you know, do we want to be, you know, the buyer who walked into my office, who's trying to predict the future path of home prices and really only wants to buy when prices are at a level that they think are reasonable and rational. And certainly I've met a lot of people like that who, you know, do their own analysis and think that the prices, you know, don't make sense and they just want to sit on the sidelines. Now, that's a challenging way to work because we're effectively want the markets to adjust to our expectations, which if we're lucky might happen. But if we're not, you know, we, we end up just finding ourselves priced out of the market again. And I, I think a, a, a better approach and certainly the approach with many of the clients who we work with who are not trying to to be the perfect analyst who can predict the future path of home prices. Ultimately, you know, they just want a home for themselves or their family that they can live in long term while reducing risk. And, and I think we do that by adjusting our home buying plans to the market rather than hoping the market's going to kind of come to the price that we want. And adjusting our home buying plans to the market uh, doesn't necessarily mean rushing out and buying a home tomorrow. It really is about analyzing the very local dynamics in the type of home and in the neighborhood we're looking at and making informed decisions based on what we are seeing on the ground in that moment. Again, we're not going to understand local dynamics by reading the newspaper headlines and, and looking at macro trends. We spot the trends on the ground and if the trends we see are a market that is going to continue to slow down. Well, maybe our decision is to hit pause and wait, you know, and again, we're adjusting to the market. We're, we're not rushing into buy. 
But if we start to see some stability in prices and stability in the market, well, maybe we take an opportunity to jump in at that time while the market's still slow, but not trending down. And again, these earliest trends that we see in the market are often on the ground. I started writing about the slowdown in Toronto's housing market back in February and March when it wasn't even in the data and we saw the first signs on the ground of fewer offers and fewer bidding wars and fewer showings. And this is the best way I feel like we can navigate this market as buyers by being active and being very in tune with all of the trends to take advantage potentially of a slowing market and get some value but also mitigating risk for ourselves in the future. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you're looking for advice and guidance to navigate this volatile and challenging real estate market, you can click the link below to set up an appointment with me personally. For home buyers, I'm offering for a limited time uh, a 50% off discount code for my home buyers bootcamp. The code's 50 off. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to email me at askjohn at movesmartly.com.